Tuesday, March 21st, 2017, we are at the side chapel of the Damascheno College, Via Bocea in Rome. The topic of our discussion this evening is about Moon November, is three day Lent. And we have uh, Father Bijo Kochalam Balil, who is a doctoral student at um, the Oriental Institute. He is doing his doctorate in church history and he's from the Knanaya community, which continues to observe the three-day Lent. And there are particular songs and chants associated with this tradition. So Father Bijo is going to talk, talk to us about that. Bijo, thank you so much for agreeing to talk to me. I was so fascinated when Father Sanish played a, cassette, a tape, a recording of uh, the songs of Moon Noyambar. And it's amazing that the community continues to do. The recording that I saw was the Monoy observation in Rome. So there's a large community of Nana Catholics in Rome. Okay. And they continue to do that. <laughs> There is a connection between the two. So 18 days before the Great Lent, 
you have the three day land. You see. And uh, what is the story connected with? Uh, Traditionally, it is called uh, the erogation of the Ninevites, the vows of the Ninevites. Right. We celebrate the fast in relation with the fast done during the time of Prophet Jonah. Uh -huh. The actual fast happened uh, in the third or uh, fourth century. We do not know exactly the days when one of the, some of the articles in which we have some reference with regard to this fast. And Joseph Asamani, he has given some of the indications regarding the tradition. And but Hebrews also gave us this information. And it is said that there was a great epidemic problem in the, the, in the Middle East and exactly Hirta, the place where we call the Hirta or uh, place be, uh, near, near to uh, Nineveh and the which was them to make the uh, do a fast according to the tradition uh, of the Jonah, Prophet Jonah. And they did that and there were, they were saved from the disease. Uh -huh. That is one tradition. Another one is Abdul Malik, a, a, a king of the Persian Empire. The, uh, he uh, conquered the land and ordered the, his uh, servants to get take away all the uh, virgins from the, com the com Christian community or the land. And when this situation uh, took place, people came together in the, in the church. And according to the instruction of the bishop, they prayed on the third day, Bishop John, the, this, we are given the name as Bishop John, got an information on a, a vision during the time of the, the gospel reading that the uh, uh, king, uh, king is dead. And they, they, will be, they, they are saved because of the death of the king. And it was, uh, he got confirmation after the mass, after the kurbana. Then they began to continue that prayer. It's another tradition. Okay. Um, the patriarchs in the 6th century or and the 7th century, they uh, asked the people to continue their prayers and it is the uh, history behind uh, the tradition. Okay, now, so the three day Lent combines both fasting and special prayers. Did these prayers were led by this priest? Was it liturgical or para-liturgical or non-liturgical, where exactly did this prayer happen? In which space? Church or? We cannot say it is in an uh, in a exact position, but it is a part of the spirituality and we say that it is done in the church because uh, we have information only during the time of the Portuguese period. Uh, when the missionaries came here, it was existent, uh, we were practicing it in India and they said that it was uh, a common uh, fast in India uh, during the time of the Sin of Diamba, they said that, said that the, the fast was very strong in India and they permitted it to continue. So we have the information. And with, with regard to the liturgy, they said that the priests pray, made the prayers in the church uh, in a special uh, to, uh, tune and the people responded. And uh, the content of the prayer was the repentance. And the priests and the people, they continued the prayers in a way that uh, one part uh, the priest will sing and the other one the people will continue. In a call response style. Yes. I sensed that from the recording that I heard. And um, the, since you mentioned the music, the melody that I heard was very similar to Barakma, Barakma, Barakma. So, can you comment on the melody? I heard about these things only from, uh, from Reverend Father Matthew Chalakandan, the Malpan of our diocese, <laughs> because uh, I made a conversation with him and he told me that it was a special tune and we did not know anything about the uh, the place from where it, okay, it came out. So uh, it was a special tune and we had, had some similarity with the Nakum Shapir. We say that now the Nakum Shapir, the, uh, the Karos, this is Bausa. Uh -huh. that's, a, uh, that's a special prayer. That is, uh, that is why um, what we call the, according to the tune Barak Mahat. Uh, then, then there is another one. Mamukalla uh, ah, Sandosha Sandabangale Dridamana Sarai in the Brahti Kam Nana Kahiyanami Nana Kahiyanami
uh, for the promotion of moon number. Oh, a password that's simple. Which that period? Which 1925. 1925. Oh, okay. And we have a lot of uh, letters in the connection with the uh, moon number in our archives. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think the Karadurti and the community had a very uh, special devotion to the moon known practice at present because it was there in existence mm -hmm. but the bishop uh, might have uh, given him okay. emphasis. Oh, okay. You know, in your in the first minute of your conversation, you mentioned the word St. Thomas Christians. Yeah. You even specified Nanaya Christians. And I have in my mind to ask you this question. Right now, it is the Nanaya community that uh, does this. But, wasn't it a common practice for all the St. Thomas Christians in the 16th century? See, I told that it wasn't the practice of the whole church. I told yes. that this was Very good. And uh, I told that the European missionaries who came to India, how, uh, they had seen that all the Christians, St. Thomas Christians practiced this moon norm and uh, they permitted the Christians to continue it only because of their affection and devotion to the uh, spirituality. But I, but I said at present is this is Purakna Oskaram, about which we do not have much documents, only this is in that And in 1895, 1895, 1895 our uh, Matthew Matthew, when he, uh, when he was the guardian of the of Kotayam, uh, he made, uh, he requested uh, the people to make some uh, practices and the prayers in the church and he changed the, the Purakna Oskaram to the inside the church and uh, and he got permission from the uh, Bishop Devi. And uh, we have some information regarding the Paragonskar in his chronicle. And that is also an information for us. Mm -hmm. And in 1925, the Vigar of the Adhuti Valley also wrote to the Bishop, uh, Bishop Jolo Parambil, that according to the tradition, as we know, so this Yakovet also participated in the Paragonskar. Okay. We, and it was a icon, because it is a token of their unity. And some, sometimes this was a unifying factor, okay. and that is why I said that Kortnoskar is something related to the Kardutti the, But we cannot say whether it was practiced in other church or we do not know about okay. that. Okay. But it was a prayer that exists also in the Kudra. In the Kudra? Kudra also. Oh, these prayers are part of the Kudra? See, the, okay. it is also part of the Kudra, Kudra meaning the book that contains uh, liturgical prayer, liturgical day hours. Because, and I said because it is a part of the Kudra, uh, in 1928, I think, uh, the uh, Father Thomas Porekel, the leader of Kulikunda Church, uh, wrote to the Bishop Chulabarabil that we, they wanted uh, some prayers of the, uh, the moon gnome from the Kardutti Valley because there existed some many uh, the manuscripts regarding the Svek manuscripts. And with the permission of the bishop, then he took the documents from Kadutirti uh, Variyavalli and he uh, compared it with the Pudra and with the help of Father La Lavran TOC, and that time it was TOC, mm -hmm. he made the comparison and made a print of, the, of that book. Okay. And, he, and, and in, the, in, that book, in that book, they uh, wrote that it was that the prayers in Kadutirti Variyavalli is uh, as it is exactly in the Kudra of the uh, wow. tradition. Wow. Uh, but also we do not know whether they continued or not. We do not have any information. Uh, because they were listening first to us only the three day prayers. Mm -hmm. This is fascinating. You mentioned so many documents and uh, you are young. You have how far are you into your doctoral studies? That means uh, I am mean, doing, doing my work that only. Around, did you start right into the station? I am mean, almost finishing. Oh, almost finishing. Oh, very good. And your area of interest is church history. Okay. And you mentioned which part, which area, which era? Uh, it is the period between the formation of the Diocese of Cotton, which is 19, uh, 1896 to 1911. 1896 to 1911. You are focusing on the particular okay. period of time. Yeah and you have access to many manuscripts and uh, okay. other documents. That's really wonderful. This was a very useful uh, introduction. What we are going to do with your permission, or seeking the permission of the copyright holders, all the recordings of the songs. And I hope someday some student of music will study and analyze the musical part of it, the textual part of it and the musical part of it. So your introduction will serve as a way to generate interest in this particular Beautiful, wonderful tradition 
and at present uh, Naval Archbishop is very interested in promoting the Sriya studies. Okay. So it was Jan uh, last year. Uh, they made this uh, uh, prayers of the Pratnavaskar in the city. Many of the prayers they made in Pratnavaskar and they have made these videos. Okay. And recently, uh, I think within one or two uh, months, they will publish, uh, upload them in YouTube that you can. Oh, great. But uh, our, uh, one day, one of, uh, some of our priests, like Father uh, Balji Mughalal and Father uh, Salji Bhutamarambe, they were uh, making these uh, efforts to uh, make the videos. And they have also made some of the works. That will be a great contribution and uh, our inter conversation and all these videos will be uploaded onto the Aramaic Pilot uh, page okay. so where we can, people can, scholars can access it from around the world. Prisija, thank you so much for your time, okay. for your interest. God bless you and really look forward to the fruits of your research. We'll shed light onto the dark area of the history of our church and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. May God bless you.